So, Anders, you just got off stage from uh, your speech at Social Summer. Yes. Um, talked about you, you. You started your talk with uh, with talking about uh, fighting and and MMA and had this wonderful transition to to the business we and industry we both work in. Can you just give us a short summary of, of how you did that? Because I thought it was really nice. Uh, if you look at my body shape, it's very obvious that I'm a lover, not a fighter. Uh, but if you look into MMA and mixed martial arts, it's an uh, extremely fascinating sport because it makes, it blends all the different types of, uh, in, in, like all the fighting disciplines, it blends together. And as a result, all the different athletes are actually combining different techniques from the different sports. Yeah. And as a result, it made MMR or UFC much, much better. Uh, the comparison to communication and the ad world or whatever is quite obvious because if you look at the rhetorics for all the agencies, they are very, they all claim the same thing, they all say the same thing and if you look at advertising, they do PR, PR agency, they do digital, digital agency, they do media, media agency, they do event, event agency, buy, like, it's, it's kind of a, actually, rhetorically, it's very interesting because it all's a shamble. Yeah. But when you look into the production of what all the different agencies do, they don't sell ideas, they only sell production. I think that's the essence of what we do. Yeah. So in its purest sense, I think people should think more about actually solving the problem rather than just talking gibberish and just, yeah. W would you say it's harder now to be a customer than five, 10 years ago in terms uh, of buying? Do you mean customer as a agency client or customer as, as a person? As a, as a client. Uh, yes, I think uh, I attended the uh, big agency um, conference where they had eight different or the biggest Norwegian brands talking. Yeah. And uh, one of the clients, uh, she said that she had never felt more lonely. She had more options than ever before, but she never felt so much lonely because she had a lot of agencies just trying to sell her stuff she didn't need. But what she, in the purest sense, she needed was basically a good advice on how to solve the problem. Yeah, so it's actually hard to buy good advice these days. I think so. Yeah, I think I think it's uh, when people or when agency ha when a when an agency has vested interest. Yeah, it, they kind of they lose the virtue of it. Yeah, they kind of so yeah. I think uh, in a world of vested interest, independence is a virtue. Yeah, in that sense. But then, for all the agencies out there, they're, they're still making money. They're still buying each other and you know mm -hmm. switching jobs constantly and it looks like they're surviving you know uh, the customers are not really getting what they want or the clients as you call them mm -hmm. and, and and they just is still are doing more and more revenue basically um, when is it going to stop and 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 uh, and how can we how can we basically help the clients I, to uh, it's a good question i think if if i if i knew the answer to it i would probably make shit loads of money which yeah. i'm not doing at the moment so no but it's um i think you will always have big agencies yeah i think you will have huge corporations that just need an advertising machine to take care of the business yeah it's easy as that which means you will always have the mccann's you know you will always have the baits you will all have it on a global scale yeah. you know uh, but i think the in-between agencies you know the agencies that are not big as global companies, but I think you will see a transition that you will probably be much more lean. You know, you'll be faster, you'll do things faster and you will solve stuff more quickly. Yeah. I think you will get rid of the traditional advertising teams. I think you will start looking into, uh, you know, you, people are more interesting in finding the interesting way of, of solving the business problem. Yeah. So you don't need any more advertising wank, basically. That will be uh, the day. <laughs> Hope so. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I come from an advertising wank background myself. Yeah. You know, and I think it's 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 blatantly obvious that by actually being able to measuring all the communication, you don't need to have like a big headed creative in the room because you can just do it and see what works. Yeah. Of course, you need a spark of creativity. Of course. But you don't need that kind of oh. crazy dude. Yeah, even though I have quite a big head. Yeah, yeah, you do. <laughs> <laughs> so, last thing, I, I loved uh, the way you ended it all because you said that we should all be more like scientists instead of uh, artists. Yeah. And and I think that's uh, I, I think that's really uh, a good way of looking at it. But I think it's going to be really hard for the for the industry to actually go that way because they've course. been doing the same shit so many years. Yes, I, we we refer to this as the dinosaur dilemma. Yeah. You know, the last ice age, 
even though it was quite cold in Norway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the big ice age, you know, uh, the dinosaur died. Yeah. And I think you will see the same thing. You have big agencies that will struggle because they don't manage to <coughs> persuade their client. And, you know, it's interesting because we, we do a lot of collaboration with different agencies and we do a lot of collaboration with different uh, various types of agencies and clients. Yeah. And sometimes you just see people coming into the meeting and they rock up with 10 people and they build a client as in 10 people sitting there and I'm, we're just two people rocking up doing notes and literally just taking the mickey out of them because yeah. it's like, you don't need fucking 10 people in a, like, when you're a client in Norway, they're not that big. So you it's don't cool. need 10 people in the room. Yeah. But it's an amazing way to just build a client even more. Yeah, I, th I feel And I think, I think it's good on them, but I think from my purest essence of what Pocket and Combs is all about, we're not about to do that. How do you recruit? How do you find smart guys when there's this big industry full of dinosaurs? Um, there is a lot of really, really clever people out there. Yeah. And I think there's a lot of really, really smart people that would like to see change. But the majority of people in Norway, they love the security yeah. of actually having a big payroll yeah. and a big paycheck coming in every month. The biggest challenge with actually running a small company is that you cannot afford to go head to head on offering salary. So the people that we tend to pick, the really, really clever young ones, and the people who are really, really dedicated. Cool. So I like to see all the people that work in our team as almost like hybrid heads. They know one thing very well, but they kind of, they like the multiple disciplines, which means you can kind of, they almost like work as a producer on a case because you don't need to be put in a room to do uh, ads or copy. You can do that as just as a consultant or a business understanding yeah. or a growth hacker or a like, digital wizard in that sense. Cool. But it's really, really hard. So if anyone out there and, you know, <laughs> like, send me an email or call me because we're really looking for like the next next clever. Awesome. I'll hope your inbox get full. Not of shit. <laughs> thank you. Likewise. Thank you so much. This is great. Thank you.